hello everyone welcome to our visionary classes so here we are with the lecture number 5 that is on the meteorological parameters and today we will discuss about the first parameter that is temperature before starting my lecture i would like to request you to subscribe our channel and contact us for the latest study material and join our academy for the regular online classes at this number and also try to subscribe our instagram and facebook page so where we are seeing that what is the meteorology so what is meteorology meteorology is a branch of science that deals with the atmospheric phenomena along with the weather and weathering forecast so we can see there is a rainy season there is a sunny season and there is a snowflakes occurring there is a rainbow in our atmosphere there is a snowflakes falling all the round there is a thunderstorm and many more kind of phenomena we are seeing in our atmosphere so all these kind of stuffs are being dealt with the branch of science that is called as meteorology so the main parameters of meteorology that we used in the science are air temperature wind speed and wind directions as well as air humidity also we are using so these are the parameters we will study in our later classes about this meteorology so so in the first parameter we will like to study about the temperature so what is temperature temperature means how hot or cold an item or material is is called as the temperature the first parameter we are reading here that is the air temperature so air temperature as we know it is varies throughout the earth surface so there is a different kind of temperature that we found in throughout the earth different kind of topography so there are three types of scale that is present in the temperature the first scale is celsius the second scale is fahrenheit and the third scale is kelvin out of which kelvin is used rarely in the aviation meteorology part so we will deal with the celsius or fahrenheit scales there is a general formula that is used to convert these scales into one another that is the scale minus the lower limit divided by upper limit minus the lower limit this is the formula that we used for the conversion so example here we can see if there is given that there is a fahrenheit scale and you have to convert into the celsius scale you have to use this kind of formula because the fahrenheit scale has the higher limit of 212 and the lower limit of 32 the celsius scale has the lower limit of 0 and higher limit of 100 the kelvin scale has the low limit of 273.15 degree and higher scale of 373.15 degree okay so this is the general formula you should use for calculation of one scale to another so here we can see it is used within a thermometer so meteorologist used several instruments like thermometer in outside stations for measuring the air temperature they are also using balloons radio sonde and radio radar reflectors for the calculation of the air temperature also the satellite based analysis is also being done by the meteorologist for calculating the temperature moving on to the next slide we are seeing here that energy from the sun like in the form of short wave is totally transparent for the earth which means it reaches the earth surface for the heating so mainly short wave radiation that is coming from the sun is hitting the surface of the earth here we can see it is being heated by the solar radiation that is coming from the sun that is in the form of short wave radiation while cloud reflects some of this radiation back into the space while some are being transmitted to the earth so here we can see that 20% of the radiation absorbed by the atmospheric clouds and atmosphere itself so 30% lost to the space by reflection and the scattering which is also known as the planetary albedo what is albedo albedo is the reflected amount of solar radiation divided by the incoming solar radiation this shows the reflectivity property of a particular material so here we can see what is albedo the reflection of incoming solar radiation is called as the albedo here is a figure we can see the mountain is full of glaciers that is covered with the snow and ice so what happens here during a shining surface the high 
amount of albedo is being seen. That means the outgoing solar radiation is much higher than the incoming solar radiation. Therefore, it shows high albedo. Here is a diagram. You can see the percentage of albedo is represented in this diagram for the different kind of materials. So here we can see the water, soil dark weight and forest, middle, savanna, crops, etc. have very, very low percentage of albedo while the snow fresh and the cumulus stratus crowd as well as the snow old are high amount of albedo because they have shining surface or yt surface which reflects most of the short wave coming to it okay now uh, we have a trend of albedo here we can see how the trend of albedo varies from lower range to higher range Okay, so you should read this. The third part, we know that most of the solar radiation that is coming to the earth is being also reflected after getting absorbed by the surface of the earth. As we know, the earth, way act, earth is itself is a black body that acts as a black body and transmits the radiation from it. That is the long wave is being transmitted from this surface okay so the terrestrial radiation that is being transmitted to the surface from the surface of the earth to the atmosphere is called as the terrestrial radiation that is mainly causing the atmospheric heating is reflected by the surface of the topography as a long wave radiation this has a long wave long wave means the wavelength of the radiation is very very long that is mostly in the range of infrared spectrum of our light then this energy is being absorbed by the greenhouse gas and which is responsible for the effect that is greenhouse gas effect. So, we can see there is a variation in the temperature with the height during the daytime and during the night time. So, here we can see this kind of temperature is being seen when the sun is rises and this kind of temperature also is seen when there is a night time situation. So, a both type of diagram is being represented for nighttime situation and daytime situation while in the middle of the time there is a constant decrease in the temperature with the height okay. so in this slide we are discussing about the temperature lapse rate so what is the temperature lapse rate the lapse rate is the rate of falling of the atmospheric temperature with the altitude that is called also called as the positive lapse rate what does it means the temperature at the lower latitude is very high at the lower altitude it is very high as compared to the our higher altitude so there is a constant decrease in the temperature as we move from lower altitude to the higher altitude this is term as the lapse rate it is represented by tau equal to dt upon dz okay so if the atmosphere is very uniform the lapse rate is very constant value while when the temperature is constant with the altitude it shows the isothermal condition when the lapse rate is zero so in this condition we can see the temperature is not changing with the altitude so it shows the isothermal condition while when the temperature rise with the altitude we are seeing that there is a condition of inversion which is is the negative lapse rate so this is the phenomena that we are seeing in the vertical atmosphere related to temperature change okay. now in the next slide we are seeing that that there is an evolution of temperature with the past so here is a time scale of years here we can see there is a constant rise and constant decrease then again rise then constant decrease then again rise then constant decrease then again rise then constant decrease so what is happening here from the past there this is uh, these are called the geological time scale this is cambrian this is ordovician this is silurian this is devonian this is in carboniferous this is permian this is triassic jurassic cretaceous then holocene then neocene this kind of our total time scale of geology is being written so what happening here there is a constant period of glaciation and there is a constant period of deglaciations happening from the past so when there is a rise of temperature the average temperature rise tends to give the deglaciation period and when there is a uh, decrease in the temperature there is a glaciation period we can see 
so this is being denoted by the o18 isotope which is a good indicator of the past climatic changes related to temperature so we use this proxy to determine the temperature of the past so this is the condition moving on to this slide we can see there is a different tilting of the earth which refers to the different seasons in the our day to day phenomena so in the total year we have a different kind of situation the first situation we are seeing here that is the our winter solstice so what happens in the winter solstice in the winter solstice we can see the direct sun rays is getting on the our southern hemisphere it is uh, on the december 21st to 22nd so what happens here there is a winter condition present in the northern hemisphere and the direct sun rays is falling on the southern hemisphere because most of the continents are lying in the northern hemisphere so we are taking it with respect to our northern hemisphere while during the june time we can see there is a summer solstice what does it means that in june 20 and 21 we have a direct sun rays on the northern hemisphere which gives the summer solstice time and most of the sun rays are on the northern hemisphere that is on the tropic of cancer okay so and there is a two mid time that is the equinox time when there is a sun rays on the directly on the equator at that time that is march 22 21 and september 22 23 this is the vernal equinox this is the autumnal equinox so what happens here during the december 21 to 22 we observe in the northern hemisphere there is a longer night time than the day time while during the summer solstice sphere that is during the june 20 to 21 we are seeing the higher day time than the night time while in the march 20 to 21 we are observing the same day and same night time while in the september 22 to 23 we are observing the same day time and same night time so this is the seasonal difference in the temperature that give rise to this kind of day time and night time phenomena so with thanks i am i will write to say you that we will discuss all the lapse rate phenomena and all the atmospheric phenomena in our next lecture i hope you enjoyed this lecture thank you